All right, we are looking at fractions, decimals, and percents. So I always like to point out that fractions, decimals, and percents are all just different ways of writing the same thing, right? They're all just different ways of showing a portion of something. So a fraction obviously gives you a denominator, so that would tell you, for example, three out of every four, right? A percent is just another ratio written out of 100, and that's what the word per cent means literally. Uh, and then decimals are kind of out of one, right? So for example, if you had one whole of something, that would be just the number one in decimal form, 1.0, whereas as a percent, it would be 100%. And so when we think about converting between, in particular, decimals and percents, we want to think about that <clears throat> relationship being 100 times as much for a percent. So for example, 61% means 61 out of 100. So if we want to convert that to a decimal, then we just need to divide by 100, right? 61 out of 100, we want to know what is it as a decimal. So one way you could think of this is to write it as the fraction 61 hundredths. First of all, that shows us, again, fractions being division. That shows 61 divided by 100. You could also see that as the word form of the decimal, 61 hundredths, which is simply 0 0.61. But if not, we can use our long division and do 61 divided by 100. 100 goes into 61 zero times. 100 goes into 610 six times and 100 goes into 100 once to give us 0 0.61. Now, the more that you do this division, you'll recognize that dividing by 100 just means we would move our decimal point twice to the left. So you'd have 61.0. You move that decimal twice to the left and get 0 0.61. So looking at another example, we have 8%. So again, that's 8 divided by 100. 100 goes into 8 zero times, 100 goes into 80 zero times, and 100 goes into 800 eight times, giving us 0 0.08. Again, if you were to use a decimal point, you move that two times, giving you 0 0.08. Now, going in the other direction, from a decimal to a percent, means multiplying by 100, because we want to know what is this out of 100? So if you were to take 0 0.27 and multiply by 100, you can see we would get 27%. And again, you'll realize that that multiplying by 100 always just ends up moving our decimal two places. And the reason for that is that multiplying by 100 changes our place value two places. So if we have 0 0.3 repeating, right, we need to remember that 0 0.3 repeating represents 0 0.33333 dot dot dot, right, going on forever. This is helpful, though, to write out several decimal places first before converting it, because then if you were to move your decimal two times, right, you can see you get 33.333 repeating. And so we would write this as 33.3 repeating percent. Okay, what about going from a fraction to a percent? So two basic ways to do this. Again, percent means out of 100. So if we want to write 4 fifths as a percent, then we need to get this as a fraction out of 100. So one way to do that, if you have a nice easy denominator, then you can just multiply to get an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 100. So for example, 4 fifths, that's a nice easy number to multiply by 20 and get 80 one hundredths. So if it's 80 out of 100, then we know that's 80%. But it's not always going to be a denominator that works so easily. So for example, if we have 15 elevenths, 
there's no whole number that we can multiply by 11 to get 100. So another way that we can do this is to simply divide because we know that 15 elevenths is equivalent to 15 divided by 11. And if we do that, that will give us the decimal form of this number. Right, so let's prove that with this first one, 4 fifths. If we were to do 4 divided by 5, 5 goes into 4 0 times, 5 goes into 40 8 times, so that gives us 0 0.8, and if you were to move your decimal twice to the right, you would get 80%. So let's do that with 15 elevenths. So 11 goes into 15 once, subtract and get 4, so we add a decimal and a 0. 11 goes into 40 three times, that's 33, subtract and get 7, and 11 goes into 70 six times, subtract and get 4, and we can see this is going to be repeating. 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6. So again, what I'm going to do is write out multiple decimal places first. Then we move that decimal point one, two times, giving us 136.36 repeating percent. So it's important that we recognize the repeating part is only used for a repeating decimal. So sometimes students will mistakenly write this. But this doesn't really mean anything because that bar notation is used for a repeating decimal. So we want to make sure we write out the whole number first and then the decimal part would repeat. So finally, let's look at ordering these numbers from least to greatest. So in order to do that, we need to have them all in the same format. So right now we have one number as a percent, two as decimals, and one as a fraction. So the easiest thing to do would be to write these all as a decimal. So first we can start with 66.1%. We need to divide that by 100, which would mean moving our decimal twice to the left, and we get 0 0.661. Then 2 thirds, we need to divide 2 by 3. And you will see we're going to get 0 0.6 repeating. So just to put that into context comparing to these other numbers, right, that would be 0 0.6666 and so on. Here we have 0 0.660 and of course 0 0.667. So to put these from least to greatest, we can see 0 0.660 is the least, so that would be 0 0.66. Then we have 0 0.661, so that would be 66.1%. <clears throat> and then 0 0.6 repeating, we can see is less than 0 0.667. So that would be 2 thirds. And then finally, 0 0.667. So that's just a quick look at fractions, decimals, and percents.